everybody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I hope you are well. It's good to be here in the scene or unseen. <laughs> um, I'll be starting class in just a moment. So give a couple minutes or a couple, a minute, I would say, before the uh, people have logged on. Um, I do have, uh, I got some of these air thingies, AirPods. <laughs> I think I'm probably one of maybe the last people to have them. Um, but I realize when I'm teaching yoga, I tend to be kind of yelling a bit because I'm not sure um, how well you can hear me when I'm a little bit further. So let me know, okay, if um, you all can hear me just fine with these. Um, look like a little Frankenstein. But uh, I'll be doing a lot more like virtual lectures coming up and um, some other things. So it's always good to have these for professional reasons. Um, so if anyone can just say maybe if you're watching just a comment to make sure uh, you can hear me okay. Um, also, next week I will be launching my. Um, New ebook. So be on the lookout for that. Um, it's called Reactivate Your Life. And it kind of comes from the other two books that I got to write in called Activate Your Life. And the Reactivate Your Life is part of um, the uh, pandemic. And it's a collection of stories from women um, who. Um, in the nonprofit, for-profit world. And our themes in the book are adaptation, perseverance, resilience, and purpose. And so we've collected stories. I've written many stories in there. My uh, co-author has written many stories in there about how women um, showed up during this time, maybe some of the challenges they've had, but also some of the inspirations that they've had during this time or the way they creatively reworked um, this time in their life. So, um, yeah, so it, uh, we will, if you uh, look for, it will be on my page, Danielle Singita. We also have a Facebook page called Reactivate Your Life. If you want to go to that and like it, you'll see when it launches. We're going to offer days, uh, the first two days are going to be absolutely free, so you can download it, uh, PDF, and we also created a workbook with it. So um, you'll get a sampling of the workbook page, too, for free. So it's a good journaling opportunity uh, that will talk about those themes and maybe how it relates to your life. So I hope. I hope people really embrace it. I think we need to hear some inspiring stories. And, um, you know, it's a short read. I think it's maybe 30 pages on the ebook and then the workbook pages that will accompany it. And then after that will be uh, something um, you'll have to pay for. But the first few days will be free. So it will be the beginning of September. So that's next week. I pulled a card. Um, and this card says, I am centered in truth and peace. I search my heart for injustices I still harbor. I forgive them and let them go. Um, I think that was a great card to pull today, especially because um, with everything going on, really, we can only do our part. We can only do what feels best for us. We can live in our truth. We can live in our um, our right living and our right action. And um, 
And it's hard not to let what other people are doing or not doing to to affect us every day. But really, in the end, um, we can only be responsible for ourselves and for our own loved ones if we we can. And um, in safety and precautions. Um, and so we just need to keep reminding ourselves to do that, to take our breath, to stand firm. And sometimes when we are uncertain or ungrounded, really the most simple and basic thing you can do is just stand in Tadasana or mountain pose. And we will work on that today and just stand like in our space and stand in our ground and stay rooted in the earth and be in our firmness. Um, and it's always a good reminder to do that. So what I'd like to do today, um, because uh, a blog I was writing last night is about like this heaviness that we can feel energetically. Um, also the heaviness just from, um, from the pandemic and maybe we started out in the beginning with all this great energy and like, okay, well, I am going to have to kind of quarantine and in that maybe get out and walk more and exercise and eat better. And as this has progressed, <laughs> I know I started out with a bang. I was running every day. I just eat really great. And then this last month, I think emotionally, it's been so hard that I'm just definitely reaching for not the best choices. Um, I've become a little less motivated than usual. And so, um, and that's okay. You know, we're, we're, we are where we are and I'm picking it back up again today. Um, but I want to work some of the, maybe the energy, maybe just work some, if you just feel like it's sticky, it's heavy, um, you feel heavy, maybe even in your walking, you just feel like you're kind of walking through mud a little bit. Um, maybe your mind is like a little, um, I don't know, like thicker, it's a little foggy, it's a little unclear, it's not as sharp as it, it was or used to be. So let's do some clearing. And then I want to work on the floor after and work the solar plexus and work, this is our will and also where our emotions can can harbor a lot sometimes with anger, frustration, and critical thinking. So um, I'd like to work this area, do some cobras, and we got I got some things planned, but we better get going because the class runs by quickly. So if you're comfortable and you can switch your leg like, position if you'd like, and everybody can hear me okay. Please share this with people or tell people about this because, um, you know, until further notice, this is how we're going to be teaching yoga classes. Um, maybe things will shift and change in the future, but um, I'd love to get more and more people able to access these videos. And so I guess you can hear me because I haven't heard otherwise. So just uh, shake your legs out for a minute if they've been in a cross-legged position. And just kind of moving them up and down, shaking them around a little bit. Let me bring that back. Shaking, shaking. Let me just move that down. There we go. I can't see my head. Okay. I always try to figure out the angle. Good. So what we're trying to do is like, let's just get rid of some of this heaviness, right? And as we've done before, like you tapping the meridian. So let's go down on the inside of the meridian, the outside is the bladder, the gallbladder, come up to the hip. This can help like lymphatically. So just tapping and kind of getting some of the circulation, the circulatory system, maybe pumping up a little bit that helps activate, activate. And then this time you're gonna go on the inside and then brush up this other outside. Brush it up. So this is the lymphatic side up here, right, in the hip. So this is wonderful for if you're just feeling kind of like stagnant, if you're feeling like you've got some even swelling in the knees or in the ankles, just 
creating. And, and let's do this, if you can see. So what we're doing is we're kind of even doing like a little brushing, a little dry brushing almost. So just creating some nice big circles. So start on the inside, come up to the knee. Start on the inside, come up to the knee. Do that for a moment. And then come up all the way, inside to thigh, up inside the thigh, up on the outside, inside. So what this does, again, lymphatically, it moves things up to be released out of this little reserve. Good, got that? So let's do the outside on the other leg. So you're coming up the inside, going down the outside. Coming up the inside, down the outside. Good, now making little half circles. So you're coming up to the knee, going down the outside, up the inside towards the knee. Down the outside, up. Good. And then do the same, coming up inner thigh, down to the knee. Inner thigh, down to the knee. And hopefully that helps with feeling some energy. Okay, good. Now cross your legs. I've got some tingling in my legs. Cross your legs to the opposite side. If that feels good or you're in a chair. Now I've done this before and this is wonderful for the immune system. So well first we go to K27. These are the kidney kidneys. So it's like the clavicle is right here, that bone. So you want to go right to the point, almost like a little cul-de-sac of that clavicle, and then tap. So you can tap with a couple fingers. And you can even tap along the clavicle if you want. And you want to do like a pretty good firm tapping. So this is stimulating the kidneys. Helps get everything moving and flowing. Good. Now we're going to go to the thyroid. So the, it's right here on the sternum, like right in between or close to the chest, like just up a little bit and tap right there. And almost like, you know, that King Kong or the Tarzan. Just tap. And if you're not sure, you can even just tap up and down the sternum a little bit. So this is great for the lymph, lymphatic. This helps with the immune system. The thyroid. So if you did this every day, um, and really it only takes a few minutes. Okay, take my glasses off. This one is for sinuses and for the stomach meridian. So I'm starting like every class doing this now because I've been doing this as part of my routine almost every day. Some days I forget. But when I do, I really do feel things moving. I feel more clear. I don't have sinus issues, but I know it helps open even just breathing better in my nose, my nasal passages. And then we're going to come down to the spleen meridian, which is like right along the bra line. And like you're pecking, <laughs> pecking at your ribs. So you can do this slower. You can do it for longer periods, but because the class is only 45 minutes, I am I am going a little bit quicker. So this is great for metabolism, digestion. And if you find it's kind of hard to do it this way, you can like cross over, do one side, cross over. It's a little bit of an awkward position, but it makes you have to put your shoulders back. Breathe. Exhale. Breathe. Exhale. One more. Breathe. Exhale. So 
so now you're going to take your um, take your right leg out straight, and you're going to take your left leg, and then you're going to kind of bend that right leg a little bit. And if you're in the chair, you just naturally happen. Um, so take your left foot over, and then you're going to place your right hand on the opposite side of the foot, and then you're going to kind of not interlace, but just meet your fingers and draw that up towards you just a little bit. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Release and take the other foot. Drop that foot that we just had and you're going to I have my left, my right foot up now. My right hand is kind of under my um, bum on my foot. Wrap it around. Draw it a little bit close to you. So your shoulders are back. And it also helps you stand more erect. Soften your eyes or close your eyes. This is like a cross patterning. Sometimes we are homolateral. So we're really just working on one side of our body, our right brain, our right dominant side. But this is kind of crossing the hemispheres. This is causing us to make sure that we are connecting harmoniously both sides. So inhaling. Exhale, inhale, exhale, last one, good, exhale, and release. I'm going to move the computer gracefully up. So you can see, okay. So everybody stand up and just shake your legs out. Shake your legs, shake your legs. I need a studio video assistant. <laughs> shake it out, shake it out. And when you're feeling heavy energetically, it's also really good to shake out your hands and your fingers. We hold a lot of uh, tension and tightness in our hands and fingers, but also we pick up a lot of like electromagnetic, looks like these little force fields. So sometimes it's just great to like make sure that we are dispersing any of that that doesn't feel good. I've been studying a lot on energy medicine, as you can see. I, I really believe in it. I believe we are all energy. We are made up of all energy, and we transmute energy. We pick up other people's energies. So it's important to make sure we're clear that we're not taking somebody else's, like, negative stuff. Do you ever just be around somebody, um, either a family member? I was with a family member the other day, and she's, She's gotten fairly negative over this last six months, and man, it just wiped me out. I wasn't prepared, and it wiped me out for the whole day. It was like she just zapped all of my uh, my energy. So take your right hand, place it over the left shoulder, and you can do a little bit of rocking, just kind of swaying back and forth. 
But then in the other way, you've probably been in some great energy where you've just come out of like hanging out with somebody or there's somebody in that room that you just really gravitate towards and then you're around them and you just feel lighter and you feel good. We're going to cross it over to the right hip. And so be around those people more. <laughs> Take the opposite side. And you can rock slowly, or if you're feeling heavy today, then maybe rock a little bit more rigorously. You can make little figure eights and cross over to the other side. So let's do this again. Again, this is kind of making sure we're not homolateral over to one side. Just move. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. And let's do one more round. So you're just really crossing over from the shoulder Press down on that shoulder over to the other side. Good. Now we're going to do this figure eight. I've done this before. So the figure eight really helps clear like anything that was sticking on you. And so I start down at the toes. You won't be able to see me do the toes, but the idea is you kind of sweep up. So not only is this good to clear your energy, but it's like a really good, gentle, beautiful movement. And come down again. Good. Do this a few more times. So it's like you're just like, you can make them as big as you want. It's just kind of like, okay, if you did have any murkiness or dark colors, then change that. Change your field. Good. Bring your hands down by the side. Then bring your feet out just a little bit. Kind of keep them nice and planted. We're going to take the right arm, we're going to bring the right arm up, and the left arm with the palm down. So kind of like extending, right arm up, left arm down, palm facing up on the right, palm facing down. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take a nice inhale. And then exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So it's like kind of meeting of heaven and earth. So when you're feeling scattered, overwhelmed, or anxious, when you're feeling like your thought process is all over the place, it's like connecting both levels of the heavens and the planet. One last round. Good. Nice. Shake it out. And this last one we'll do. There's more, but let's just focus on these. This is, uh, let's take your middle finger and you're going to, it's called the hookup, and you're going to place it kind of in your navel. Just kind of in your navel. And you're going to press in and then up a little bit. And then you're going to take the middle finger of the opposite, press on the third eye. And you're going to bring your eye gaze, even though your eyes are closed or softened, bring them up towards that third eye. This is where our intuition, our wisdom, our knowing, and it's kind of like a seal. Good, release. Now you can take your hands, place them behind your back, interlace your fingers. Let your feet come out wider so they're comfortable. You can do this in a chair as well. And they're going to draw the shoulders back and down, look up, and then we're going to fold forward. 
So you can bend your knees here and you can fold forward, let the arms come up overhead. Bend the knees a little bit more. Let the head fall. And then slowly release and come back up. Allow the shoulders to come up and down. There's a spider coming right down in front of me in a web. <laughs> and move back. I'm going to move back. Let's go over here. I love spiders. So I'm going to give him his space. Let me see where he is. So let's try that again. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right. So let's try that again, shall we? So let's bring the shoulders um, down. Interlace your fingers. I'm going to try not to hit the spider coming down. Bend your knees. And you can bend them wider if you want. This is like another form of a seal, like a yoga seal. And you're just going to fold forward. Let the shoulders relax as you allow the hands to come over to where it feels good. Bend more if that feels better. If you have heart issues, then you don't want to go past. You want to stay more horizontal. Breathe in. Release your hands. Stay in the position as you come up slowly. You're going to come up slowly. Keep a nice bend. And I want you to be almost like in a semi-squat. And coming from side to side. And as you do that, I want you to bring the opposite shoulder in. And just creating some organic movement. So you're creating a little bit of a twist. Bringing that one shoulder in and looking up so you can stretch the neck. And then the other side, this is good for the side body. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Ground your feet. Nice. And slowly come back up. And shake it out. So I'm going to move the thing again. You can see me. And we want us to come onto our bellies. I'm going to do it from this side so you can see me. I'm going to move it back a little bit more. All right. Okay. So come down onto the belly. And just take a moment here and let your forehead come onto the ground. So let your forehead come onto the ground. And this is really nice for a busy mind. So let your forehead come down. Keep your hands on either side and just roll the forehead. Kind of like side to side. You're physically helping melt that tension, that busy thinking. Remembering to breathe slowly. Good. 
Now, keeping your arms like a little bit more gentle, just want you to curl your toes and then want you to just work your hips so you can keep your head down. And then just gently let the hips rock from side to side. This is the triple warmer meridian. It's where we tend to hold the fight or flight. So you're just kind of rocking your hips from side to side. Taking a nice inhale. And then exhale. Slowly we're going to come up into Sphinx pose. Sphinx pose is when you have your elbow 90 degrees on either side. Let the hands, fingertips be flat. If this feels okay on your back, and if it hurts your back a little, bring the legs out a little more. From here, I want us to take an inhale, and as you exhale, I want you to expel your uh, exhalation. So you're inhaling. Stick your tongue out and exhale. <sighs> inhale. Stick your tongue out. Exhale. <sighs> inhale. Stick your tongue out. Exhale. <sighs> and then slowly come down. Bring your right hand out at about like 2 o'clock. And you can take your opposite hand. You're going to like bring your forehead to the ground and you're just going to rock a little bit onto that side. So the idea is that you're stretching in your shoulder. So you're opening up the pecs, the top of the shoulder. Come back down. So we'll do this a few times. Don't worry if you... Don't get it right away. I'll try to do this at an angle so you can see it a little better. So I got the left arm out. My head is on the ground. My right hand is got the fingertips. And then I'm just rolling onto my left hip. And you get a nice little stretch in the back. But you're also working the shoulders. Good. Come on back. Let's try that again. So now that you got the hang of it, my feet are only up in the air like that because I'm against the wall. <laughs> you can have them flat. So put your right hand out to like two o'clock or three o'clock. See what feels best. Take your left hand with the fingertips and you're just rolling onto that right hip. Come on back and let's do one more. Again, opposite arm. Opposite hand, fingertips. Put your head nicely on the ground and just roll onto that left hip. <coughs> Sorry. Good. So this is a nice way to prepare for cobra. So come on back. Let's go into child pose. Curl. You can curl the toes if you want to get more stretch in the um, bottom of the feet. Or you can just let the feet be flat. You can put your hands in a stacked position. 
If you're in a chair, then you can get out of the chair and get a nice stretch by holding onto the top of the chair, almost like in a downward dog version. Allow the lower back to unwind, if you will. Allow space in between each vertebra. You can rock a little bit from side to side if you'd like. I find the more fluid you can be in your yoga practice, the more fluid you can be in your day. <sighs> Taking those deep cleansing breaths helps release any of your own negative energy that can kind of get stifled down and stifled down. You can have it come out more forcefully or slow and steady exhale. Good. Bring your hands back to the mat. To come up into tabletop. Uh -uh. Oh, no. Not sure what happened. Let's see. I think. Did I get cut off? Are you able to see me? Not sure if you can see me at the moment. I'm trying to get on. Can anybody hear me? I'm going to try to go back live and finish my post. Yeah. It says live. I'm not sure if you can see me or not. <laughs> oh, sorry. I think so many kids and people are on internet right now with classes. So what I'm going to have you do, if you can hear me, um, is go ahead and begin to lie down. You can lie down and get comfortable onto your back. It's saying it's live.
So I'm not sure if this is going into a feed or not. I apologize. If it is, so everybody just lay down. Lay down, get comfortable. And bring the right knee up. Bring the right knee up towards you. And so you're interlacing your fingers and you're bringing the knee up towards you and then release and do the other side. Bring the left knee up towards you and release. So you may not be able to see the video, but I'm hoping you can still hear me. So let's try that again this time. Bring the knee up towards the head or the head up towards the knee and release. And then the other side. Do this a few more rounds. Kind of working out any last little bit. And then go ahead now and allow for the full extension of your back into Shavasana. Into Shavasana. Allow the feet to relax. the knees, allow the shoulders to relax, and allow the whole body the whole body to relax, allowing the whole body, the whole body to relax. Any thoughts that you may have, let them go. Return your breathing to a more regular, soft, effortless pace. If things are coming up, allow them to be released on the exhale. Letting go, letting go, letting go. Allowing your body to be supported by the earth. Releasing, surrendering, and letting go. Anytime you are faced with any Emotions coming your way from other people, from social media, 
It's important to detach. It's important to let go. Because we really can only practice our own inner calm and our own inner peace. our own truth. If we can cultivate that positive energy within ourselves, it's as if it's beaming out from our body so that we can maybe affect others in a positive light. Maybe we can gently combat the negative forces that are coming toward us with our radiance, with our light, with our peace. and with our calm nature. Taking these last few minutes to embrace our day. Knowing that you will continue to face challenges, be it global, be it community, be it family, be it technology. But it's how we face those challenges, how we can rise up, move forward. and learn from these challenges, how we can take these challenges with more grace and ease I invite you to either stay in the Savasana if that feels good for you. Enjoying the ground, the centering. I will just end with the Om. You can join me if you want or just listen to the vibration. Mm. 
to thank you Sorry for the last bit of video that didn't show up. But I hope you all have a blessed day. Take care.